Hi, everybody. Um, first of all, thanks for all the great comments on other videos. I appreciate it very much. Uh, this next video, we will be updating our code so that we can fire more than one laser, not just the one that we did in the previous video. It's a little more interesting. I'm sure you agree. Uh, before we get started, you can follow along by downloading the code for part four or checking out that tag. We have to do a, a quick fix for our target delta time. I had overlooked that our delta time right now is an integer. When we do the division here, it's um, not giving us the proper values. It's actually ending up being a 62 frames per second frame rate, not a 60 like what we want. Uh, the fix is fairly simple. We just have to get more precise with our arithmetic here. So I just changed these to uh, F64s. So those are floats. And then that'll give us the target delta time that we want, which is about 16, 17 milliseconds uh, per frame, which gives us our 60 per second that we want. So after you make that change, um, it's fairly simple. We also have to do an update to get delta motion here. We don't need this F64 any longer. There we go. We can just pass in our speed and multiply it directly by the target delta time divided by 1000. And that'll give us everything we need to get our proper, our proper frame rate. Okay, so the first change that we have to do is to our game struct. You'll remember that we have a single laser there. I'm just going all the way up here. Here we go. So we have our single laser entity. We can only fire it once. Uh, it, only one can be on the screen at a time. And you'll remember that we wait until it gets off screen before we, we decide that it's available again to fire. Uh, so we'll just make a simple change here. We'll change this to lasers, and this will be an array of entities instead of a single entity. Odin has a couple of different types of arrays. It has fixed arrays and dynamic arrays. I want to use a fixed array rather than a dynamic array. Um, because a dynamic array will grow and shrink, well, sometimes shrink, uh, depending on the number of items in there. And I really don't want to force the game to do that much work. It's not necessary. I think at any given time, I'll, I'll only need a certain number of lasers on the screen at once. So um, I'll just, I'll use a fixed array, and, uh, and the theory is that it'll be a lot less work, and so it'll help the game run, run a little bit faster. Here, I'll just, I'll pass in the number of um, of lasers, uh, the size of the array that I want. So I'll just use uh, a constant, like I usually do, number of lasers, and we'll put it up here. Uh, this will be an int, so with the double colon, it will default to an integer, which on my system is 64-bit uh, int. Okay, we'll do put our laser stuff down here. So we have number of lasers. Um, so the next thing, of course, we have to update is where we are actually creating our lasers, which is at the bottom. It's in the create entities uh, function procedure. So we'll just make some slight changes here. We're going to iterate through. Uh, we're just going to create a loop uh, with the number of iterations that match the number of lasers that we want to create. So for Odin, you can do something like this for index in. And then our range is kind of handy. We can do zero, for example, because we're doing indices into an array. So I want to start at zero. And I could just do num of lasers, but the Odin compiler will give you a warning that just doing it like this is deprecated, I believe, if I remember correctly. So we have to use the equal sign, which means up to and including this number. So if we do that, that means we're going from zero to 100 which is actually 101 items in our array. So I have to do uh, a negative, I have to do uh, minus one. I have to subtract one off of num of lasers so that from zero to 99 gives us our full 100 lasers. And this is where we will create our laser entity and put it into that array. So instead of game laser, it'll be lasers and we'll put in this new entity at our index. So it'll be zero all the way up to 99. And uh, some other changes we have to make. So the texture, I of course don't need to store a texture on every single entity um, now. I can just store it in one place and use that when I render the lasers. I don't have to store it on the entity. So I'm going to take that out and put it here. And it, uh, we'll add this directly to our game struct instead of just text for texture. We'll call this a laser text. 
and that's where I'll put that there. Now, um, let's jump up to our game struct just over on the left here. I will add laser texture here, and this will be um, a pointer to an SDL texture. Here we go. Okay, so that takes care of that. Uh, the other change that we have to make is instead of creating a single SDL rect for actually painting it onto the scene, of course, we need a different destination for every laser. So we'll have to create that within our loop. I'll just call it D to keep it simple, make it faster. So I'll do uh, our D SDL rect here within the loop. We do still need the height and the width for our sprite, though. I still have to query that. Instead of querying it and putting it directly on our destination rect now, instead, I'll have to do it uh, separately. So these are I32s, because our rect struct takes I32s for its height, width, x and y coordinates. And I'll change that right here as well. So now we set our height and our width with our create texture like before, but instead of putting it directly on the destination rect, we put it on these other variables. So I can remove that, but you remember too, actually, I want to uh, help you recall that the sprite is actually quite large, so we still have to reduce it by three. So let's make sure we do that here before we forget. Our X will start our laser way off to the side um, so that we later on will check for this um, and we won't render the laser if it's way off, off screen. So I'll start by putting it off screen, and that way we won't render them. Uh, y will automatically uh, initialize to zero. I don't have to put that in there, uh, but I'll, I'll put that there just so you remember. Our width will be our laser width, and we'll reduce it by three. And we'll do the same uh, for the height. So that should take care of that. We don't need that anymore. So here we are. Uh, we're going through our loop, 99 or 100 rather, lasers creating a rect for each one and placing the destination there on our entity struct. So of course, I removed the texture on the entity struct. We have to change uh, the player entity struct as well. So I'll move that out here. And we'll do game player text. So not unlike what we just did for the laser. And let's see the update. Just to stay consistent with my ordering here, I have laser text and lasers. Now instead of the, just above the player, I'll put the player text, which is also uh, an SDL texture, of course. And oh, our, our entity, we actually have to change the fields here. So I can remove that, we don't need that. So let's see if we can compile first, make sure I didn't forget anything, load and run. And I did forget something. So game has no field laser. I must be referenced. Oh, yes, of course. I am still referencing that somewhere. We have to update our update and render section of the code first. So in the update and render section of our code, uh, we have to change pretty much everything here. So uh, we're still firing our lasers when we hit the space bar, of course, but we no longer rely on the health being zero uh, to tell us if the if the laser is available or not. So instead of checking if the laser health is zero, I want to uh, implement some sort of cooldown. So let's say um, laser cooldown timer, because this will uh, if you don't have a cooldown, if you just allow you know the firing to happen too quickly, then all of your lasers will kind of bunch together. You can try it out for yourself, and you'll see. So I wanted to implement a cooldown just to make sure that there's some, some space available between each laser. So if the cooldown is zero, uh, let's see. The first thing, what we want to do is go through our um, lasers. So for laser in, so this, this should look familiar now, just like we did at the bottom there. For laser in, uh, here we've got a reference game, lasers. And if our laser, if our destination X is greater than the window width, so if it's off screen, that means it's available again. I could just check for health like I did up there. Um, and actually in the code online, I, I did it this way. I checked to see if it was off screen. I removed the health. Um, but 
uh, later on when I was developing, when I was working on other parts, I implemented the health again. So I'm sorry for the confusion. Uh, maybe I'll follow along with the guide so that you can see that I've gone back and forth a couple of times and, and maybe you'll learn something. Um, not to do what I did. That's a good way to learn. So if we're off screen, if it's greater than the window width, so we're off screen, that means that the laser is available again. So this is actually um, where we'll do this. So now we'll, we will reset the X and the Y to the game, the player's uh, current positioning. So again, it looks like it's firing. And then uh, we will reset our cooldown. So remember, we're here because our cooldown is, um, is zero. So we need to reset that again. And uh, this will be another uh, constant that we'll set up above. Cooldown timer. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so let's let's put that cooldown timer up here just so we don't forget about it later. Uh, I have to check to make sure I can't quite remember what I set it to. Uh, 50, that's what I tried. We'll do it right up here. Laser cooldown timer is an F64. Why? Because when we're reducing it down below, I'll, I'll show you, we'll be reducing it by... Uh, by a floating value. Okay, what did I do? No, not 500, 50. So we reset it here. Now, down below here, I'll get to this other part first. At the end of our loop, this is where we will uh, decrement our timers. So uh, again, the idea is that, you know, every so many frame or every frame, we reduce our timer by a little bit, and that will force our lasers to be spread out a little bit. It won't be, uh, it won't be, um, won't be firing too quickly. So laser cooldown, and we'll decrement it by, uh, we'll use our get delta motion, and we'll just reduce it by the laser speed. Um, you can try different times if you'd like. So the timer is 50, but we're reducing it a little bit by the laser speed every frame, and eventually we'll get to zero, so that will allow us to fire again. And then we look through all of our lasers to see which one in our array, we grab the first one, and uh, that is off screen and then we reuse it that's basically it we keep going through this fixed array each time grabbing the first available laser to fire again and then once we found that we can just break our reload uh, our reload loop we don't have to find a second one now once that's done uh, basically all we're doing is resetting the the x and y coordinates then we will go through all of our lasers again and render all of those that are presently on the screen. So not off screen, they've been fired, they're on the screen. And yeah, I did do it right down here at the bottom. So we'll go through our four laser in game lasers. Now, if, if the laser destination X is less than the window width, that's when we will render it. So we get our laser destination X. We have to move it. Remember, we have to move it by our get delta motion amount, uh, which is our laser speed. And then here, oh, I have it right down here, so didn't have to do that. Remember down here, what I just said, I was using health before. I made the stupid mistake of removing that. Uh, but to stay consistent with the updates on the repo that you'll see, I'm going to make this change and just know that later on I'll re-implement uh, re the health check again uh, because that was a much better way to do it. But learn from my mistakes. Uh, so, yeah, we check if it's on the screen, and if it is, we move it. Uh, and then we render it. And then we make sure to decrement our cooldown. So let's just uh, make sure you didn't miss anything. Let's try that. Let's uh, try to compile again. Let's see if that works. Odin run. Nope. Uh, laser cooldown. I didn't implement that. Oh, here we go. Laser cooldown. Uh, and this will be, yes, a float. What did I forget now? 
Amos no field laser. I'm still checking laser somewhere. Oh, yeah, that's not what I want. Oh, no, I did want that. Okay, let's try that. Game laser, game laser. Here we go. Ah, laser text. Okay, that's my problem. So I do want game laser text like that. Game laser destination. No, I want just my laser destination. So I'm just updating the code that where I was once referencing the single laser. Now I want to reference the one from our loop in our array. So I had to change our reference to the laser texture rather than being on the laser entity itself. It's now on the game struct. And then I'm updating the destination, uh, the reference to the destination struct, which is on the single laser, not on the game. Uh, the game struct. Here, let's try this again now. There we go. We have success. Sort of. Our player is no longer being rendered. That's because I changed how our player is being rendered. Let's see, where is that? Right here. So you remember the player texture is no longer on the player struct, but it's on the game struct. And so that should do it. We didn't see our player. So that gives me a hint that our player uh, texture, which just wasn't being uh, referenced properly. And we're not firing a weapon. So let's make sure, let's see how that's going. Laser cooldown, set zero. That should be reset. Laser cooldown reset. What did I forget? So let's troubleshoot a little bit. Am I firing? Oops. Fire. So let's keep an eye on our console. Spacebar is not working. So that means that I'm not firing anything. That shouldn't be the case. That means our cooldown is not working. Uh, let's see. I think I actually did this. Maybe it'll never actually equal zero. Because in the code, if the cooldown is not, see, I, it, that's true. I'm counting down my laser. It will actually never equal zero. It's uh, it's um, it's signed, which means it will actually go below zero. So checking if it actually equals zero will pretty much always fail. So I have to check that it's uh, above zero. If it's not above zero, rather. So that's why I have my my bang there. Uh, if it's not above zero, that means that our cooldown timer is, is good and we're ready to fire again. So let's run it. There we go. Now we're firing multiple uh, multiple lasers. Uh, I want to get rid of that print statement there. And I want to show you something. If you just hold the space bar, that's how fast it'll shoot because of our cool time, uh, cooldown time. And you can see that uh, it's fairly evenly spaced, which is great. If we didn't have that cooldown timer, then they would run together in pretty much a single, just one big line. So maybe I can just remove that and you can see. Yeah, so if you do that, it just looks like a big, a big, uh, what would you, a big flame, I guess you could say, um, with no break in between. And then we quickly get through our 100 as well. So you see these gaps when you're holding it. That's when uh, all of our lasers are on screen. So there's 100 of them and we have to wait for some of them to go off screen before they're available again. So that's why we see that gap. And I noticed when I was playing, you could just kind of do this and it made it really easy to, to defeat enemies. So that's why I implemented the cooldown timer. So play around with you know how long your cooldown is, how many lasers you have on screen, the laser speed. These are the, the things that you can tweak up here with the constants that we made up here. And uh, you can tweak them and see what feels best for your game. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please put it down below and share your progress as well. See you next time. Cheers.